why this began? Because you took a journey to speak about your own struggles. That was, that was very brave that you did that, very unusual that you did that. Talk us through, through that period when you were making that decision to speak so openly about this. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, you know, you used two words. You said brave and unusual. But when I spoke out in 2014, I didn't think it was brave or unusual. I just felt that I was being honest. Honest with an experience that changed my life forever. Um, and for anyone who's ever experienced mental illness, it can be, I'm not saying it is, it can be a lonely journey. And I think that's when I realized that speaking up is how I wanted to take that journey forward. It was my learning, probably my calling, um, where I felt like even if by speaking up, if I was able to impact just one life, the purpose would be served. Um, where in 2022, I never imagined that today, you know, if you asked me in 2014, would I be sitting here having this conversation with you about the incredible work the foundation has done? No. At that point, it was really about just doing one interview on a, on a national television or one interview just to be able to reach out to as many people as possible and share my experience. Um, and then when I did that, it didn't feel to me like the journey ended there. It felt like just the beginning. It felt like there was so much more to say and so much more to do. And that culminated into the foundation and, the, and, and all of the work that we do today. Wow. If we just go back, and you do so much excellent work with this, I think like you're saying, if it can impact even one life, of course, when you spoke about it publicly, before that, you had to speak about it privately because we all acknowledge it and you reach out to somebody, you know, a friend, whoever, to talk about it. Uh, and I think that's the first step that people find very difficult to make. So if you can just talk to people about that, did you face any resistance? Did you face acceptance? What happens in that first step? So I give all the credit to my mother for recognizing the signs and symptoms. Um, because it just happened out of the blue. I was on a career high, everything was going well. So there was no reason uh, or no apparent reason why I should have felt the way I was feeling. But I would break down, um, you know, for no reason. I would feel, the day, there were days when I just didn't want to wake up. I would just sleep because sleep for me was an escape. Um, I was suicidal at times. And so, Having to deal with all of that, and you know, when my parents live in Bangalore, and every time they sort of visited me, even now when they visit me, I always put on a brave front, like everything is okay, and you know, you always want to show your parents that you're fine, you know. Um, and so I was doing one of those things of like, I'm fine, until you know, they were leaving one day, they were going back to Bangalore, and uh, my I, I broke down, and my mother asked me the usual hygiene questions, like, is it a boyfriend? Is it someone at work? Has something happened? And I just didn't have answers. It was none of these things. Uh, and it just came from a really empty, hollow place. Um, and she knew instantly. And I think that, for me, was God sent. Um, and I really hope, and I think that's one of the reasons why I set up the foundation, for us to be able to create that awareness to be sensitive to the people around us, to look around us. If someone's feeling low, don't just pat them on the back and say, hey, you know what, it's gonna be okay, or, you know, hey, you'll be fine. Or just listen to this music or play some upbeat music and think that everything's gonna be okay. If you feel, and this is for everyone in this room, if you feel for a prolonged period of time, which is more than three weeks, if you feel a feeling of low or sadness, um, it is recommended that you see a psychiatrist or at least see a counselor. And my theory is always, I'd rather be overcautious than not. Um, you know, it's the same way when you have, you know, when you have a stomach bug or, you know, you go and see a general practitioner, 
you can also go and see a general practitioner. That's one of the things that we do. We're capacity building for our country because we do not have enough mental health professionals to serve the 1.3, 1.4 billion people. So one of the things that we do is, is capacity building by educating general practitioners. So I'd say don't ignore the signs and symptoms. Don't ignore when someone's telling you they're feeling low or not feeling okay. Um, don't sort of brush it off by saying it's just a one-off. Um, so coming back to this, yes, it, it's my mother who recognized that I needed help. I spoke to a counselor who I knew. Um, again, I was fortunate to have known someone within our family circle. Um, and from my voice, she could tell that I was, that I needed uh, professional help. And then the journey went on. I, you know, I was put on to a psychiatrist, medication, that sort of went back and forth for many months. I was resistant to that because there was so much stigma attached, A, to mental illness, B, to, you know, you always have these sort of ideas that you don't want to take medication to do with the mind and with the brain and you're going to lose control and... So that went on for a couple of months um, until I finally started taking medication and I started feeling better and, 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 and so on. So it, it, and yes, it was my, the immediate people around me knew, um, but at that point I wasn't ready to tell very many people. It's after I recovered, after many, many months, uh, when, I, when I was sitting back and just thinking about this experience that I'd been through, um, that I felt like I wanted to share my journey with the world. And through this entire period, I think we can give a round of applause for that, please, everyone. And through this entire period, you're, you're getting up every morning and you're still having to put on the war paint and the smiles for the world because you've got to act in movies, you've got to sell movies, you've got to sell products, you're, you're on this high. Geez, on a scale of 1 to 10, what was that difficulty level? Oh, very difficult. 11? Very difficult. Yeah, I mean, I can't even put a number to it. To just yeah. have to wake up every morning and to breathe, you know, to eat, to, to just do the basics was a struggle. So, so you can imagine what having to put myself out there, be at events, um, engage with people, perform, um, obviously took, took a lot. So I'm thinking the, the vision and the mission of the foundation, as you have said, from the time you started it to now, uh, you know, it's obviously grown so much. So, so what is the, the vision and the mission now of the foundation at this moment? It is to give hope, you know, because like I said earlier, it can be a, it, it can be a lonely journey. And we're here to say you are not alone. We're here to say we're in this together. When I say we, I mean us, those who experience mental illness, our caregivers, because I believe, we believe that they're an e equally important part of this journey, and society and community at large. Um, and so giving hope to every person experiencing stress, anxiety, and depression, um, and to let you know that we're not alone. And it, it stemmed from the one line, which was, you know, when I put my mind to it, I said, I don't want even one life to be lost because of mental illness. Oh, beautiful. What's the... Tell me, there's, there obviously must be a lot of fulfilling moments that happen when you hear people's stories about the foundation has helped them. Can you recall any, like, some fulfilling moments or, or times when you felt uh, great peace almost that, that you did this, that you started this, and it's truly helping people? Every day. Um... There's not a day that goes by um, when, a, a, when a person doesn't come up to me and, and talk about an interview that I did or, um, you know, something that they read or something that they saw that, um, that prompted them to seek help or encourage them to, to tell someone they know to seek help, that they felt better, that they're on the journey to recovery. Um, and each one of us in the foundation experience that on a daily basis. There's somebody or the other who's, who'll, who'll always acknowledge the work that we've done. And that for us is the most fulfilling part. You know, we can have numbers on a slide and, 
and talk about how many lives we want to impact in the next five or 10 years. Those are all long-term goals. But it is those everyday moments when you meet someone, when they say we saw an interview or you know, we saw this social, uh, post on social media or um, you know, there was this one kid who came and said, I couldn't explain to my parents, I wanted to seek help, but I couldn't explain to my parents what I was going through. And I made, I made them sit down and watch your interview. And after they watched your interview, they understood what I was going through and they, they allowed me to go and see a psychiatrist. Those are the moments we live for. That's absolutely beautiful. That really is. It's, 